Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto betrayed and leaves and married with female Kaiubi? Part 2, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description. So let's begin the story. Naruto was slowly waking up from the best nap he had ever had in his life, but was confused from feeling pressure on certain parts of his body. Once he opened his eyes to see what it was he was a little surprised to see all his girls lying on him. Fu and Tamari were on his arms while Tsunami and Yujito were on his legs, and lastly Kiyomi's head was resting on his groin. He sighed and thought of what to do, when he had an idea he quickly made a shadow and switched places with it. He then went to make breakfast for the girls. Meanwhile, Ara was sitting in his office finishing up his paperwork when he heard a knock on his door, enter he said calmly. When the door opened he saw that it was one of his border watchers, Lord Kazakiyaj we have spotted Kanohan Ninja in the desert, and it looks like they're heading for us, sir he said quickly and clearly. Ara thought it over and asked, were you able to identify who they are or what they look, like the ninja looked down to read the names that had been written, yes sir, we have identified the eight Kanohan ninja to be Hanada Hayuga, Ino Yamanaka, Tsunade's assistant Shizun, Haruka Yamino, Kakashi Haddock, Shino Aburam, Rock Lee, and lastly former Anbu Yamato. Ara thought of what to do next, send someone to retrieve Naruto Uzumaki and his guests. Also, go and tell all the guards at each gate, they are not to let the Kanohan ninja into the village until further, notice dot the guard bowed, yes sir Dotty, then went out to fulfill his orders, Gar relaxed, and got up to open his window and look out of his window. Back with Naruto, Naruto had two other clones carrying food trays with him, and once they got to the room he dispersed his clone, and the girls hit the bed softly and started to wake up. Naruto smiled good morning. I made breakfast for everyone so time to get up and eat five clones came in with tall mini tables, one for each girl. Naruto was taking second glances at some of the girls and noticed that some of their appearances had changed. Tsunami looked younger and a little shorter, her skin was softer and a certain glow about it. Tsunami was however the one with the most change the others had little change. The only thing they all had in common was the effects on their skin, their height. All of them got up and started eating except Yujito and Kiyomi, who simply covered their heads and refused to get up. Naruto got a playful smirk on his face and made a clone, they both slowly crept over to the two sleeping girls and pinched their butts playfully and got the result he wanted, which was making them both jump up and then roll off the bed. That wasn't very nice Naruto kun Kiyomi said getting up, Yujito just got up after stretching which when she does resembles a cat, probably because of Nibi, and starting eating. Naruto sat there smiling and relaxed, he then took a closer look at Tsunami's transformation Tsunami-chan, have you looked in a mirror this morning she looked puzzled at this and finished eating before she got up to go to the bathroom to look in the mirror. The others were eating while Naruto and Kiyomi were counting down in their heads, and when they both reached zero, they heard Tsunami scream with what sounded like joy, before she ran back into the room and glomped onto Naruto. Naruto-kun I haven't looked this way in years she said while hugging him whether she meant to do it or not was unknown. When she finally stopped Naruto took a moment to catch his breath, but I always thought you looked beautiful Tsunami-chan. Now you look even more beautiful he told her honestly. She blushed at this and hugged him, thank you Naruto kun dot he then smiled and hugged her back, you're welcome Tsunami-chan he told her smiling. Once everyone was done eating the girls took turns in the shower and were getting ready for the day. After everyone was done showering and getting dressed the group started going over what to do for the day when a knock was heard at the door. Naruto got up to answer the door and saw that it was a Suna ninja. Naruto-san the Kazakiage requires you and your group in his office immediately. Naruto nodded, and the Suna ninja then left with his task done. Naruto then walked back into the room to tell all the girls, girls Gara needs us now they all groaned, thinking their fun day was ruined. Come on girls it's not all that bad he then smirked when he had an idea, he walked over to the door and opened it, okay girls, here's something a little fun for you Dottie, then walked over to Tsunami for a second, then walked back out for a second, and made a shadow clone. While he took off to the Kazakiyaja's building carrying Tsunami, the shadow clone went back inside, now then the first one to get to the tower, will get a special reward from yours truly, while the rest will not he walked out of the doorway and smiled, see you there the clone, then poofed away. The girls all stood there for a second before they all took one look at each other, before they all rushed out one by one starting the race, Kiyomi feeling generous, gave all the others a head start while she closed the door. At the Kazakiyaja's building, Ara was doing his paperwork waiting for Naruto and the girls, when Naruto walked in setting Tsunami down on a chair, hey Gara Gara looked confused for a moment Naruto, where are the others that were with you Naruto, looked away smiling, right about now they're probably all racing here Gara sighed and looked out the window to see what looked like four mini dust clouds, all heading towards his building. Naruto counted down from five to himself, and when he finished the door was forced open, and Kiyomi jumped in gracefully with a smirk on her face, while the others tried jumping in after her only to fall on each other, with Fu being on the bottom with Tamari on top of her, and lastly Yujito fell in landing on top of the other two. 
Well girls look like Kiyomi one he grinned and hugged her, when he was done she was smiling, you'll get the rest later he whispered in her ear, she smiled and stood quietly. Gara sighed and said, you might want to sit down for this Naruto, I don't think you're going to like the news I've received Naruto's smile dropped, and he sat down now seriously. The girls grabbed seats and followed Naruto's example, Gara took a moment to let them get comfortable before he gave them the news. Meanwhile in the outskirts of Suna, the group of Kanoha ninja heading to Suna were now minutes away from the sand village, when they all heard what they all stopped and froze completely from the Kai, killing intent and rage that was coming from the direction of their destination. They all instantly knew who it was, the only reason being that they had all experienced it firsthand. Kakashi looked at everyone before speaking, looks like we haven't missed him he paused for a moment, everyone move out. We have to get there before they leave they all then rushed to the village. Back in Gara's office, the girls had all rushed to Naruto in a second to do their best to calm him down, even though honestly they were all just as pissed as him except for Tsunami who was trying to keep her cool as she held Naruto, surprised as she had never seen him like this. He could do a lot of unneeded damage, can you repeat that Gara he asked, sounding very pissed and demonic. Gara sighed, I said that my border patrol has spotted six Konoha shinobi on their way here to the village. The eight consist of Hinata Hayuga, Ino Yamanaka, Tsunade's assistant Shizun, Haruki Yamino, Kakashi Haddock, Shino Aburam, Rock Lee, and Anbu Yamato. Naruto growled and tried to calm down, Gara looked at him, what do you plan to do now Naruto? Are you going to leave before they arrive or face them he asked his friend. Naruto got up and looked at his girls, what do you all want to do the four girls who could fight all huddled up and discussed on what they wanted to do, and when they finally came to a decision they broke up and Kiyomi stepped forward, Naruto-kun we have all decided that we want to go and see what the pathetic Kanoha ninja want, and if need be kick all them dot she replied with a grin on her face. Naruto smiled at his girls, then turned around to look at Gara. you heard them Gara, but don't worry we'll make sure that the village doesn't receive any damage Dottie smiled at his friend, then turned around and left. Once Naruto and the girls were gone Gara laughed silently to himself, I hope those Kanoha shinobi know what they're getting themselves into. But the Kanoha shinobi, Bakashi and the others were stuck at the gates of the village, because the guard would not let them in. Please just let in, we are only looking for someone, and we believe that they are in your village Kakashi tried reasoning. Soon and inside, getting tired of the copy nin's perseverance, for the last time no. I have orders not to let any Kanoha ninja in for any reason. Kakashi sighed and looked to the others, I think the only thing we can do now is wait, and if we're lucky we'll see Naruto before he leaves the village. Small time skip, the Kanoha shinobi waited for at least two hours, not noticing the five girls move around them, setting up different surprises and traps. When they were finally done they all hid in nearby spots, while Naruto played his part and walked out of the sand village calmly and casually. When he was finally within view of the Kanoha shinobi he acted like he didn't notice them while he walked in their direction, all of them just stared at him seeing what he was going to do. Naruto just continued walking till he walked right past them and noticed out of the corners of his eyes that the guys all looked mad at being ignored while the girls looked sad, the first one to take action being Kakashi who yelled out Naruto when the yelled a number of things happened, the others in his group came out of their stupors and got up to wait for Naruto's reaction, while Naruto himself stopped in his tracks, what do you want Haddock Naruto asked coldly, making Kakashi and the others minus Lee and Shino flinch at the malice in his voice. The Kashi relaxed himself before replying, we were sent to take you back to the village Naruto, please don't make us use force Kakashi said honestly, if we have to we will while you are strong, you are outnumbered 8 to 1 when he finished speaking Naruto started chuckling before he started laughing, well we're outnumbered Haddock your numbers are wrong, we are not outnumbered as it isn't even, 6 to 6 when Naruto finished his sentence all of the Kanaha shinobi looked confused. What do you mean Naruto K was all Hinata got to say before a kunai flew and cut her cheek enough to start blood seeping out, she cried out in pain, and when the others heard her, they looked to see that she had been assaulted, and so Ino and Shizun rushed to help her, when they had all turned away from Naruto to look at Hinata, when an unknown voice was heard, never, I repeat never call him that again you trash all of them except Ino and Shizun turned to see another person next to Naruto. Naruto merely chuckled Kiyomi-chan calm down, well I know that your reason for cutting her was good, we wouldn't want any wasted weapons, now would we he asked her in a playful tone. Hinata was hurt that Naruto didn't care that she had been hurt and that he considered a weapon a waste on her as well. The others were surprised and pissed at what they heard, but also confused as to who the woman was Naruto what the hell is your problem, and why are you being so cold to us Eno, yelled at the other blonde, who the hell is this girl, and why did she hurt Hinata-chan for no reason Eno, then demanded before cowering under the Kai from Naruto and the redhead, before he coldly replied, first off I know, you don't get to demand anything from me, secondly she had a good reason for attacking the Hayuga, that reason being that she tried to call me something she lost the right to do so a long time ago. 
Hinata was now on the verge of tears, and the others were surprised, but angry at the things Naruto was saying, what happened to you Naruto Shizun, asked quietly to herself while patching up Hinata's cut, but was loud enough to be heard by the blonde and his girls, which in turn caused a lot of Kai to be released, which exposed where the other girls were as well putting the leaf shinobi on guard, whoever you are show yourselves Kakashi yelled. There were three gusts of wind followed by flashes of movement one after the other, and when the leaf shinobi opened their eyes, they were surprised to see four girls guarding Naruto, while another girl was hiding behind Naruto holding his hand and talking to him. Thu, Yujito, and Kiyomi all let their demonic features show and released a stronger killing intent. How dare you ask that question when you should already know the answer you trash Kiyomi was now beyond pissed and ready to murder, the same being said for Fu and Yujito, what do you mean? We didn't do anything to Naruto kun. Shizun said being as stupid and ignorant as Jiraiya and Tsunade, and once she was done with her sentence, she was sent flying by a powerful kick courtesy of Fu. Fu was looking down, and the Leaf Nin were surprised at her speed, and how easily she got past the rest of them. I guess it wasn't obvious that when we said that the high Uga bitch couldn't call Naruto kun by that suffix anymore, that went to Al if you dot except Lee San and Shino San, of course, she added with a normal voice. The Kashi kept his gaze on the entire group, why showing favoritism to only two of us, he asked, really confused. After this, Ino looked around, speaking of which, where are Lee and Shino? All of them except Yamato who was checking on Shizun, looked around to see if they could locate the two ninja when Yujito stepped forward to answer both of your questions. The only reason we treat Shino and Lee kindly is because they're the only ones who have never betrayed Naruto-kun and have never damaged physically or emotionally, and to answer your last question. When she stopped talking she moved, and the others were shocked to see the people they looking for standing with Naruto's group, they asked to join our group Kiyomi said with a grin. Naruto, Kiyomi, Tamari, Fu, and Yujito stood in a line with Tsunami, Lee, and Shino behind them. Naruto spoke without turning around Tsunami go back to the village with Lee and Shino for now and wait there Dottie, then summons a small dog-sized four-tailed fox, you take them to the village and make sure they get there safe he told him without looking away from the leaf nin. The fox bowed as you wish Naruto saw him a little fox then sped off to the village with Lee and Shino right behind him, with Tsunami being carried by Lee. Naruto then turned back to the others and looked at who they were going to have to deal with. After much thought he came up with his plan, Fu, Yujito you two take care of the Hayuga and Yamanaka, Tamari you can get take on Yumino, and me and Kiyomi will take care of Haddock and Yamato when he finished with his instructions they all nodded and rushed to their opponents. Fu and Yujito vs Hinata and Ino. Yujito and Fu glared at Ino and Hinata with a glare that made them feel uneasy, even if they didn't show it, you two are gonna pay for what you did to Naruto kun Fu said, while Yujito snarled at the two Kanoichi, while flexing her claws. You bitches and that horrible village don't deserve to have someone like him. After all the crap you put him through. I'm surprised he didn't finish what Kiyomi started Yujito said while well, Ino and Hinata cringed at the tone they were being spoken with, we're taking Naruto back to Kanoha. He belongs there with us, not with all of you who probably just want him for something selfish like his name her power Ino growled out. You took him away from us. You took away our Naruto-kun she yelled only to freeze up when she felt Yujito's demonic chakra flare and the image of a two-tailed demon cat appeared behind Yujito. How dare you? Call him Naruto-kun. You don't deserve to call him that you two-timing bitch. Fu yelled out letting her chakra flare while Yujito started doing the same. You along with all those other and so-called friends he had in Kanoha are the reason he left and broke his heart. And now. We're gonna break you for causing him so much pain Yujito roared out and with blinding speed, appeared in front of a frightened Hinata and punched her right in the gut. The sound of ribs cracking caused Hinata's eyes to widen in pain and cough up a glob of blood. Yujito then kicked her in the left side of her head and sent her skidding across the desert, with Yujito going after her. Ino paled when she saw what Yujito did to Hinata monsters. You people are monsters she yelled out, and Fu just scoffed at her. You and Kanoha perhaps we are monsters, but to Naruto-kun, we're angels. And unlike all of you in that village we love him for who he is. You're not taking him back and I'm gonna make sure. You and Kanoha pay for what you did to our Naruto-kun she said as a forest green demonic energy flared from her body. Ino then charges at Fu with her fist cocked back and punches Fu directly in the face, but is surprised as Fu just stands there not even phased. Smiling at how shocked Ino was, the Yamanaka then cocked her other fist back, and before she could anything Fu sunk her fist into Ino's stomach, her eyes bulged from how strong the punch was, and she coughed up saliva. Ino takes a few steps back clutching her gut as she falls to her knees Okami. What the hell. Her fist felt like a sledgehammer. She thinks to herself and then vomits on the sand. Fu has a smirk on her face as she walks over to the coughing Ino, grabbing the girl by her blonde hair, lifting her by the roots, making her girl yell out in pain. Us's smirk became a scowl when she suddenly headbutts the girl and drops her onto the ground, watching her fall with a thud. Fu then appears beside her as Ino clutches her broken nose in pain. 
Fu then stomps on Ino's chest making her scream out in pain this time, oh I'm sorry, did that hurt? Because that's nothing compared to how you broke Naruto-kun's broken heart she says and stomps on her chest even harder making Ino's cries become louder. Tamari vs Iruka. Emrys's eyes were ice cold as she glares Iruka down, you nonsense have got a lot of nerve coming here and trying to take Naruto-kun away from us, all of you are the reason why he left and you still want him to go back. And it's really sad Aruka, you're the one person who he thought of as a brother, and you betrayed him by the snake, trash she said making Aruka glared at her. Don't you dare call Anko-chan that he tells her in a dangerous tone, making Tamari smirk. Call her what? A trash. A bitch. A tramp. Oh I know what to call her. She's the king of bitch now I know why everyone calls her the snake bitch. She probably uses her summons to relieve herself and will eventually get tired of you and dump you just like she did Naruto she finishes in a sickly sweet voice. Aruka saw red as he started to perform hand seals, I'll kill you. Katen. Kiryu and he then fires a red dragon at Tamari who smirks and pulls out a large silver fan. When it opens Aruka notices the fan was designed red with a blue moon on it. Sorry but I don't feel like dying yet. Futen. Dai Kamitachi she cried out and created a powerful gust of wind that directed the fire dragon to a different side, shocking the man. You see this fan here? Naruto-kun made this for me because I was precious to him. It's called Kei's Megami. Not only does it augment elemental chakra like my wind base chakra, but it doubles the power of my wind, meaning your little fireballs won't even get close to me. She says, while well, the man looks at her in shock. Now I'm gonna cut you to ribbons with it. Futen. Kuro Ryu Tatsumaki she cries out, and then she swings her fan around in a form of dancing, while the wind around her turns black. During the process it turns into a roaring dragon while coiling around Tamari's form. Tamari then stopped and an evil grin appeared on her face. She then swung her fan in his direction, and the black dragon headed towards Aruka. It then opened its mouth and engulfs him into its wind-based body, and it started to rip the man to shreds. Haruka cried out in pain as he was slashed by invisible blades on every part of his body. Naruto and Kiyomi vs Kakashi and Yamato, the flokes could kill then Kakashi would be dead by now. The man cringed at the glare Naruto was giving him. It reminded him of Minato when he was pissed only worse. Now Naruto I know you're upset with Hokage-sama and the village, but don't you think you're taking this too far he asks and Naruto just remains silent with his arms crossed and his father's cape fluttering in the wind, aren't you gonna say anything Naruto he asks. Sorry, but I don't associate myself with those who are lower than trash he replies in a cold tone, making the son of the white fang flinch. Now that was harsh Naruto. I know you're mad at me for not training you like I did Sasuke, but he do not mention that traitor's name in my presence. I should have killed that arrogant fool a long time ago. Naruto says as he cracked his knuckles, making Kakashi's eyes widen. Naruto-kun would you like to switch Kiyomi asks, and the blonde shakes his head. No. You deal with that knockoff of the Shadane. Haddock is mine Naruto says, and the vixen grins evilly at the nervous wood user. Okay. For a demon like me this'll be easy. She says and then vanishes, scaring Yamato who started looking around for her. Kiyomi was standing behind him and suddenly wrapped a tail around his entire body, he says with a look of horror and fear on his face, and she chuckles at him. Took you long enough you stupid monkey she said, and then with a flick of her tail, she sent him flying into the dunes, and she flexed her clawed hands. Naruto chuckled as he saw what Kiyomi did and Kakashi looked at him in fear. Naruto, you freed Kaiubi. Why? What the hell are you thinking about freeing the demon that killed my sensei he yelled out only to regret it when said blonde's Kai increased. Shut up Haddock, don't you dare refer to my maid in such a manner, she has been there for me more than you, that pervert, or that old hag. And how dare you refer to my father as your sensei. As far as I'm concerned you and the village are trash. I've been waiting to beat your weak and pathetic face for a long time, you are nothing but a failure. Like father, like son. He says and Kakashi's eyes widen at the jab and narrows his eyes at the blonde while clenching his fists. You're gonna regret saying that to me you brat. He says in a low and dangerous tone. Please, you could barely beat Zabuza back then without that eye in your skull, nor could you face Itachi. Do you want to know why? Because they were better than you and once I'm done beating your sorry face to the ground, I'm gonna rip that accursed eye out of your skull and crush it in my hand. And after that, I'm going back to Konoha and I'm gonna kill Sasuke. Naruto says. Bakashi's hand ignited with lightning covering his right hand. I will not allow you to do that. Rikiri he yells out and charges at Naruto who just stood there. Kakashi then thrusts his hand forward at Naruto's chest, the blonde then grabs his lightning-covered fist, making the man's eyes widen. How he asks and the blonde smirks. Being a wind user does have its advantage, if you forgot, wind nullifies lightning, you idiot Naruto then needed Kakashi in the ribs, making the man hunch over, he then backhanded the man in the temple, and sent him to the ground hard. Oh don't keel over yet team, I haven't broken every bone in your body, yet Naruto yelled as his eyes become crimson, and he charged at the man. 
Yomi scowled as her body was wrapped in wood, and Yamato was panting as he used his abilities to ensnare her. You can't escape Kaiubi, my wood bay suppresses your yaokai, and once we apprehend Naruto, we'll find a way to seal you back into the boy. He said as Kiyomi's scowl became a grin. Is that so? Stupid monkey she asked and then flexed her muscles, and the wrapped wood started to strain from her strength. Yamato's eyes widened in horror, and before he knew it, Kiyomi broke free of them, and pieces of wood went flying into different directions, how was all he asked. Kiyomi dusts off her outfit and smirks at the man, you may have the Shadame's abilities to create wood, but yours isn't nearly strong enough to suppress demonic energy outside a dot she says, and before he knew it, a red blur knocked him upside his head, sending him to the ground hard, and he was rendered unconscious. Ujido was unleashing a barrage of punches and kicks on Hinata, who could barely avoid them even with her Byakugan activated, most of her moves were swatted aside or avoided by the blonde girl, she tried to strike her in the head, but Ujido pulled a left and right hook on the side of her jaw, and then kicked Hinata in the chest, and sent her flying backwards. Hinata struggled to get up, and when she did she saw a large blue fireball head right towards her, turning the sand into glass and leaving a trail. She managed to dodge it, but the heat from it burned her clothes and singed her skin and hair. Ujido then wrapped her hand around Hinata's face and slammed her into the ground, she then dragged Hinata across the dirt and then threw the girl. Fu held a beaten, bloody, and bruised Ino by the throat, and when she saw the flying body of the female Hayuga head straight at her, she smirked and dropped Ino. Hinata crashed into her, and the two were sent tumbling across the sand, and both girls laid unconscious when they stopped. Ujido appears beside Fu and wraps an arm around her shoulder. Too easy Fu says. No kidding Ujido replies not even tired. They looked to see Tamari knock a torn up Aruka in the head with Kei's Megami, and said Leaf Nin was knocked out. She then dragged the unconscious man by the collar and approached the two, so where do I dump this trash she asks, and they point to Ino and Hinata's battered forms with grins on their faces. The wind mistress tossed Aruka next to the Kanoichi, and grinned with her fan resting on her shoulders, I feel better don't you she asked the other two. Fu and Yujito nodded back and watched as Naruto dealt with Kakashi. Kiyomi then appeared with the beaten form of Yamato who was also knocked out. This stupid monkey actually thought that his knockoff version of the Shadame Hokages could suppress my power she said, and tossed the man next to the others. She then chuckled evilly when she saw Naruto knocking Kakashi around like he was a genin. So the copycat is finally getting a taste of his own medicine. How ironic she said as she saw Kakashi barely dodge a Futen Rasengan, and the ground shakes from the impact of the dot, he's gonna maim the poor, nonsense dot she said as she licked her lips. He is so hot when he's angry, the mere thought of him being hot and pissed turns me, on dot she says with an ear-splitting grin on her face. Fu, Yujito, and Tamari blushed when she said that and then a grin appeared on Yujito's face, he'll probably want to relieve himself with us once this is over, angry love is said to be the best, and with Naruto-kun's stamina dot she stated as she shivered as did Fu and Tamari. Don't forget about his power. We'll be lucky if he doesn't harm us Kiyomi said to them with a cheeky grin on her face, and laughed when Tamari, Yujito, and Fu were sent flying backwards via large nosebleeds, and hit the ground with a thud, leaving three unconscious and grinning girls with blood trailing down their noses. The Kashi was panting like crazy with cuts and bruises on his being, Naruto stood five feet away from him with a blank expression. How boring, I expected a better fight from you sensei. Tio think that you used to be an Anbu, and considered to be one of the strongest ninja in Konoha. Don't make me laugh, I mean the least the old hag could have done was send Gai San. At least he'd make me work up a sweat due to the fact that he could or can kick you using Tejutsu only. He says making Kakashi glare at Naruto. How? How did you get this strong? You were never this strong back in Kanoha he says only for Naruto to laugh at the man. You really are an idiot haddock. I've always been this strong. I just held back to keep idiots like you from demanding things from me. I have more talent in my pinky than Yurichiha does in his entire body. Now then Naruto pulled out a tri-pronged kunai, and a look of horror appeared on Kakashi's face. Naruto threw the kunai and it landed near Kakashi's feet, and before Kakashi could blink, he saw a flash of red, and then his body jerked back as Naruto plunged a Rasengan into his gut and sent the man flying backwards. Kakashi then hit the ground with a small crater surrounding him, and as he struggled to get up, he could only watch as Naruto approached him. Kakashi struggled to stand on his feet, and before he could try anything, a shadow clone was behind him, and it put Kakashi in a stranglehold. I already told you Haddock, I am gonna rip that eye out of your head and crush, it Dottie says as he approaches Kakashi with his right arm stretched out and his index, thumb, and middle finger extended. Kakashi's eyes widened in horror as he struggled to get out of the clone's grip, but it was too strong, no Naruto you can't. This eye is the only memory I have of Abito. You can't take this from me he cried out as Naruto placed his fingers around the man's left eye socket. Do you think I give a damn? You and the village took everything from me, and now I'm gonna take what you cherish the most, your best friend's eye Dottie said in a demonic tone as he pulled the eyeball out slowly. 
please Naruto, I beg of you, don't do this. Kakashi begged, and Naruto had a smirk on his face. Sorry but I'm done listening to you or anyone from that hellhole. Oh and tell that prick Sasuke that he's next he says and with a yank of his arm, he pulls it backwards and ripped the Sharingan eye out of his head. Kakashi's screams of agony and pain could be heard across the desert as Naruto ripped out the eye that gave him a thousand dot. The clone knocked out Kakashi whose empty eye socket bled, Naruto stared at the bloody Sharingan eye that was in his hand. One down, one more to go dot he says as the clone hoists Kakashi over his shoulder and walks with Naruto to the girl's location. Gu, Yujito, Tamari, and Kiyomi saw Naruto and his clone with an unconscious Kakashi walking towards them. Naruto sees them and grins as the clone walks past them and tosses the man into the ground and disperses. Hey Naruto kun Yujito, Fu, and Tamari said at the same time. Kiyomi sees his bloody hand and blinks. Why is your hand bloody Naruto kun she asks, and Naruto holds it out in front of them, and they all gasp. Naruto Yufu asks, and as he nodded yep, I ripped out that nonsense's eye he says, and then closed his hand crushing the eye like a bug. I consider this as a form of payback. Now the fool now longer knows a thousand he said smirking. The three grinned and Naruto looked at the unconscious forms of the leaf nin. All that's left is to return the trash where it came from, and then after I need to get rid of the rest of my pent up anger. Wanna help me with it he asks. Yes the three say at the same time and blush while Kiyomi snickers. I'll also help to deal with the trash dot she says as she leers at the K.O. Nin. Okage Tower. Soon Aid was sipping on some sake wondering if the team she sent out managed to get Naruto. That was when a two-tailed fox appeared with a scroll in its mouth, and then it drops the scroll and disappeared, when she then opened the scroll she jumped back when she saw the beaten and bloody unconscious forms of Kakashi, Ino, Hinata, Haruka, Shizun and Yamato on her desk. The note was next to them and she opened it and read it, Hey old hag, this is my last warning, don't send any more of your ninja after me or next time they'll come back in pieces. Enjoy the rest of your life, you old bat. From, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, P.S. Just so that you know Kakashi no longer has his special eye courtesy to the blonde fox, Kakashi has a message for Sasuke, and Lee and Shino say they quit. Tsunade's eyes widened in horror as she saw Kakashi's empty eye socket and slumped back into her seat, the council and the others are not going to like this at all she then sighed and called some of her emergency medics to her office and sat back down with one thought on her mind, I need more sake. Back with Naruto and others, Naruto and his group were on the road and heading for their next stop in Kurigakur to talk to the Mizukage and see if they could get more supplies while they were there. Only problem was that they had been walking for hours, and all the girls besides Kiyomi had gotten too exhausted hours ago and were now being carried by Fox Summons, and Shino and Lee were in the back while Naruto was at the front of the group still pissed. Kiyomi however was tired of waiting for her reward for winning the race back in Suna Naruto-kun, when am I getting the surprise I was promised Kiyomi asked playfully. He stopped, looked at how the sun was setting, and sighed okay, we'll camp here for the night he started to set up when he was stopped by Kiyomi. Wait Naruto-kun, I have a better idea she then went through hand signs unknown to the others before she stopped and yelled summoning Jutsu when the smoke cleared, there were a total of 16 dog-sized six-tailed foxes that had what looked like building tools on their backs, you called us, Kaiubi sama the others except Kaiubi were confused as to what she was doing. Yes I would like all of you to build us a temporary one leveled home with three bedrooms, with one being big enough for two males, and the other one being enough for six people, but also having another room connected to it big enough for four. I would also like bathrooms to be connected to their respective rooms she continued, while the main fox took notes. I would also like a kitchen and lounging room when she was finished the group of foxes huddled together and went over the rooms and then ideas, but before they could run off Kiyomi stopped them oh, and by the way this goes for all of you okay. Never call me Kaiubi sama again, call me Kiyomi sama instead they all bowed before they took off in different directions to get wood, as they already had their building tools. Time skip. In only a couple hours the group of foxes were done building what Kiyomi had asked for. We have finished what you asked for Kiyomi sama the leader of the group of foxes said, while they were all bowing. Kiyomi looked at the house and smiled, good work, that is all we need for now, go ahead and head back they all nodded before going away in a puff of smoke. When they left Kiyomi walked into the house followed by the others, well we better get some sleep. Lee, you and Shino take the smaller room with the two beds, okay Naruto said while looking at the two former Leaf Shinobi, who nodded before they went to their room. When Naruto and his girls went into their room, Naruto was surprised at how big their room was, and with the fact that they only had one bed, even though it was in his opinion the biggest bed he had ever seen in his life. As Naruto and his mates went to the bed, the blonde looked at them, so who gets to go first he asked, I do Fuyujido, Tamari, and Tsunami all yelled out at the same time, but then glared at each other, while Kiyomi and Naruto chuckled. Now girls are not fighting, there's plenty of me to go around. Tsunami-chan went first, then Yujito-chan and Fu-chan, and then it was Tamari, and then Kiyomi-chan was last. 
So now Yomi-chan gets to go first, and I have still have to give her the reward she was supposed to get for beating all of you to the Kazukuja's office he told them. All Naruto kun Yujido, Fu, Tamari, and Tsunami whined while they started to pout. Naruto couldn't help but laugh and gave each of them a kiss on the forehead, don't whine Tenshi's. I'll treat you all equally, and I never break my promises now do I he asked them, and they shook their heads. Now be a good girl and head to the other room okay? And wear something better he said getting blushes out of all of the other girls, and they ran to the room. Yomi grinned but then beeped when Naruto lifted her up bridal style, and he had a look of lust in his eyes. Now Yomi-chan, it's time for you to make me happy he says as he locks lips with her, and she returns it while he leads her into their room. Time skip. After getting cleaned up, Naruto walked out of the shower wearing a pair of red shorts and drying his hair with a towel, while Kiyomi was wearing a crimson robe and sleeping in the bed snoring lightly. Naruto smiled and walked over to her sleeping form and kissed her forehead while she let out a sigh. Sleep well, Dottie said quietly and out of their room and to Tamari's. Tamari's room. Tamari was in her room combing her wild yet smooth blonde hair with a comb, and then felt a pair of arms wrap around her waist, and she turned around to see a grinning Naruto. Hello my desert flower. Are you ready to be rewarded he asks Tamari to smile seductively at him. You took your time with Kiyomi Naruto Kundat she says, and then kisses him on the cheek, and he returns it. Yujito and Fu's room. Naruto appears in Yujito's and Fu's room, and feels two pairs of arms wrap around his neck, and the other pair around his waist. He looked behind him to see a grinning Yujito with her hair down. Hey there Foxy Kun what took you so long Yujito asks. Yeah Foxy Kun what took you? We were beginning to think you forgot about us. Fu said with a pout in her face, while well, Naruto chuckled. I would never do that to you too. How can I make this up to you he asked them playfully. A grin appears on each of their faces, and then they pinned him onto the bed. Time skip. When Naruto woke up he was not surprised at all to find each of the girls on a different limb or being as close as they could to him. He quietly made a clone and substituted himself to go outside and finally used the time he had to try and talk to the toads and see what they were going to do. He went out to a clearing that he thought was big enough for Gamabunta and quickly went through the hand signs, summoning Jutsu when he finished he had to move back quickly to make sure he wasn't accidentally stepped on. Who summoned me he heard the summoned boss yell out and grinned before yelling, Hey Bunta. Long time no see the toad turned around to see his favorite blonde, Naruto is that you? How have you been we were just talking about you. Naruto stopped for a second, what do you mean we he asked confused. The giant toad moved until Naruto saw someone on top of his head, and when Naruto saw who it was he froze, and his anger started to boil. By we I mean me and Jiraiya. The toad sage jumped off of Gamabunta and landed in front of Naruto, so this is where you've been Naruto, we've been looking for you. Now it's time to grow up, be a man and come back to the village. When Naruto woke up he was not surprised at all to find each of the girls on a different limb or being as close as they could to him. He quietly made a clone and substituted himself to go outside and finally used the time he had to try and talk to the toads and see what they were going to do. He went out to a clearing that he thought was big enough for Gamabunta and quickly went through the hand signs, summoning Jutsu when he finished he had to move back quickly to make sure he wasn't accidentally stepped on. Who summoned me he heard the summoned boss yell out and grinned before yelling, Hey Bunta. Long time no see the toad turned around to see his favorite blonde, Naruto is that you? How have you been we were just talking about you. Naruto stopped for a second, what do you mean we he asked confused. The giant toad moved until Naruto saw someone on top of his head, and when Naruto saw who it was he froze, and his anger started to boil. By we I mean me and Jiraiya. The toad sage jumped off of Gamabunta and landed in front of Naruto, so this is where you've been Naruto, we've been looking for you. Now it's time to grow up, be a man and come back to the village. Naruto's eyes flashed red for a few seconds, and he growled at the toad sage excuse me. Do you want to repeat what you just to me? I didn't quite hear you he asked in a dangerous tone. Jiraiya blinked and repeated himself. I said you need to grow up, be a man and come back to the village he said again. Naruto's hair shadowed his eyes for a few seconds, and when he looked back up at him, his eyes were colder than ice and were red with slits. Before the pervert realizes it, Naruto slams his right fist into the man's torso, causing Jiraiya's eyes to bulge and his body to hunch over. After that, Naruto reared his right foot back and planted a roundhouse kick directly into Ryder's jaws and sent him flying into a tree. Jiraiya hit the largest tree hard and with a force that caused the tree to collapse and hit the ground, causing it to shake a little. In the house, the five girls were snuggling against the clone when they heard the ground shake. Kiyomi's eyes opened up instantly, and she sat up as did the other girls. What the hell was that the nine-tailed vixen asked while the others looked around and the clone's eyes widened and he trembled in fear. Oh shit Dottie says getting their attention. Oyabun boss is angry, scratch that he's pissed beyond belief Dottie said, making their eyes widen. Why is he so angry Fu asks. 
Apparently his so-called godfather Jiraiya just said something to him that pissed him off, and now Ayabuna's gonna kick him if not kill him. He stated. Biomi leaped off of the bed and looked out the window to see a pissed off Naruto and Jiraiya, who was a few feet away from him on the ground clutching his torso and rubbing his jaw. The others appeared near the window and looked down as well. Fu's eyes were the size of dinner plates when she realized that one of the salmon was Naruto's godfather. Wait, I don't get it. If Naruto Kun's godfather is Jiraiya san, why is he pissed off? She asked, confused. Looks like we're about to find out Tamari answered as they watched the event, with no one noticing that Kiyomi had mentally slapped herself as she forgot that the other girls hadn't been told the whole story, and everyone who had cheated on Naruto. Emma Bunta's eyes widened and his mouth was gaping. His pipe almost fell out of his mouth when he saw Naruto knock Jiraiya into a tree. Ow. Hey what the hell was that for Jiraiya yelled at the blonde. You should know what backstabbing idiot. You've got some nerve telling me to grow up and be a man. Naruto answered in a voice filled with anger and rage towards the man that was not only supposed to be there for him when he was younger, but had been one of the people to betray his trust and had an affair with Tsunade. Gureya was taken aback at his words, while Gamma Bunta regained his composure, looked down and spoke up. Hey what's the deal why did you attack Jiraiya like that the toad chief asks Naruto to look up at the toad and then back down to Jiraiya. So he never told you huh Bunta he says glaring at the sage who cringed at his second apprentice's gaze. Emma Bunta blinked and looked at Naruto and Jiraiya. Tell me what. What the hell is he talking about Jiraiya the toad asks, looking at Jiraiya suspiciously. It's nothing Bunta the brat's just throwing a fit like always he told the toad, and once again Naruto's eyes flashed red and he snarled, revealing his long canines and flaring his chakra. Emma Bunta tensed when he saw Naruto's chakra flare up and it wasn't good. Throwing a fit. Baka he's pissed beyond reason and is about to tear you a new idiot, now tell me what he's talking about or I'll pop you like a zit the toad boss demanded. That was when Kiyomi landed next to Naruto and stood by him, yes Jiraiya tell the toad why your godson is about to tear you apart she asks Jiraiya to flinch, well Bunta looks at Kiyomi and blinks. Godson? Wait a minute, who are you Gamma Bunta asks. Kiyomi smirks and looks up at the toad. You should remember me tadpole. I was the one who gave you that scar on your right eye. Dot, she answered. Bunta's eyes widen as does Jiraiya's Kaiubi. He stutters out and she nods, revealing her fox ears and nine tails. It's Kiyomi Tadpole. Kaiubi is the title. Dot, she answered, and that was when Jiraiya's chakra flared. How in the hell did you escape from the seal, you monster? He yelled, but then regretted it when Naruto's killer intent shot up and his eyes became crimson and his nails turned into claws. Don't you dare call my mate a monster, you piece of shit! Naruto roared out, making the man back away a little. Mate. Your mates with her. What the hell's the matter with you? Are you stupid? She's the reason your father's dead yelled at the blonde. Shut up you old fool Naruto yelled. You know good and well that nonsense Madara was responsible for that Kiyomi looked down at the ground in shame and her ears fell down as well. You don't blame the sword for striking its target, you blame the wielder who's holding the sword you dumb Naruto shouted back and wrapped an arm around Kiyomi's shoulders and let her bury her face into his chest. I don't care. She's responsible for the death of the one person who I thought of as a son, and now here you are comforting her like she's the damn victim Jiraiya yelled, pointing at Kiyomi. Hey. We're getting off topic. Naruto tell me why you are so pissed at Jiraiya and why Kiyomi is free yelled asked once again. You want to know why I'm pissed at this pathetic excuse of man Bunta? Well there's actually two reasons and I'll tell you what they are. The first reason being this idiot was supposed to look after me if anything happened to my parents. He said as he let go of Kiyomi. He promised my father that I'd be looked after and kept safe. He snarled out while the memories of the beatings and torture entered his mind, and the fact that the women from that village treated him like trash and screwed him over by playing with his emotions. Tears formed in his eyes as all the negative feelings that he felt came out. He was supposed to be my godfather and protect me, but son of a bitch left me to the wrath of those villagers and spent the first 12 years of my life writing, peeking at women. He abandoned me and dishonored the dying wish of my father. The so-called son was so devastated to have lost. Twelve years of pain and suffering in that shithole and not once did he help her come to see me he yelled out while the tears fell from his eyes from remembering his childhood. Then Naruto looked back up his eyes full of hate and anger, and if that wasn't bad enough, every one of my so-called friends including this idiot have betrayed my trust and acted like I'm the one being childish at Gamabunta's confused look, Naruto quickly explained all of the cheaters in Konoha and how they all betrayed his trust by having affairs Jiraiya and Tsunade included. Biomi pulled him into a hug and wiped the tears from his eyes with one of her tails. Tsunami, Fu, Yujito, and Tamari were shocked, saddened, and pissed at the man who was supposed to have been there for him, and even more mad at Konoha, after getting the whole story of why Naruto decided to leave. Amabunta was speechless for a while when he heard what Naruto had told him, and then he looked over at Jiraiya and gave the man one of the fiercest glare he's ever given anyone. Is what he said true Jiraiya. Tell me you did not do that to Minato's kid and didn't check up on him once. 
and please tell me that what he said happened with you and the rest of the shinobi who were named, did not actually betray his trust in such a way he asked in a low yet dangerous voice, and Jiraiya looked away. Jiraiya, I'm not gonna ask you again. You better give me an answer. He demanded raising his voice and letting the man know he wasn't in the mood for bullshit. Yes Bunta it's true. He said in a solemn voice. Gamma Bunta's eyes flared and he smashed his webbed hand into the ground near Jiraiya and caused the area around them to shake. After the shaking stopped, Gamma Bunta was trembling with fury and if looks could kill, Jiraiya would be dead right now. Jiraiya. I don't know what to think of you right now. You've done some stupid things in the past but this. This is beyond forgivable. And to think how Kanoha as a whole has fallen if it lets come like this become ninja. And I'm especially sad at how far you and Tsunade have apparently fallen if you did this to your own god, son he said in a hollow yet dangerous voice. Jiraiya gulps and tries to speak up. Please Bunta let me explain my reason he never got to finish, because he had to jump away from being sliced in half by Gamma Bunta's Tanto, which slammed down at Jiraiya's previous location. Reason? Reason? What kind of reason do you have for abandoning your godson? Scratch that. What the hell were you thinking abandoning Minato's son? Had I known that or how terrible Nero's life was going to be in that dot village I would have squashed you like a bug and burned that village to the ground he roared. Jiraiya was shocked and scared beyond belief. Bunta took a breather and gave Jiraiya a look of disgust. You are a disgrace to the Gama clan Jiraiya. My respect for you and Kanoha as a whole is gone, Hesaid. Jiraiya couldn't believe what he was hearing. I he started to say until the Toad Chief gave him a glare that told him to shut up. Quiet Tadpole, I can't bear to look at you right now. As of right now I'm nullifying your contract with the Toads. Do not summon me or the high-ranking Toads for anything until you make retribution with your godson and beg for forgiveness at Minato's grave. If you summon any of us without reconciling with us or Naruto. I'll kill you he stated in a dark tone making a shiver go up Jiraiya's spine. Emma Bunta looked at Naruto and spoke up to him in a calming tone. Gaki. I hereby make you the new sage and permanent holder for the Toad contract. Only your family members or people you trust can sign it. Your father was the one man I respected. Hell he was respected by all the Toads especially with his honorable sacrifice. May he find peace in the afterlife. Now then Dodd I believe you have a pervert's face to kick and as much as I would like to see you beat this fool into the dirt I need to get going and inform the elders about Jiraiya's dishonorable actions. Gamabunta was about to leave when he thought of something else, oh and Jiraiya, be sure to tell Asuma and Tsunade that the slugs and monkeys will hear about what they did as well the toad boss then disappears in a puff of smoke before Jiraiya could protest. Jiraiya stood in his spot speechless, Naruto not wanting to deal with the man at the moment turned around to leave, when he heard Jiraiya mumble something, what was that old man he turned around to see Jiraiya walking towards him, I said you're not going anywhere till I seal that monster back into your stomach and take you back to Konoha, Naruto froze at this as did Kiyomi, the only difference being that Naruto stopped in rage, say that again. Jiraiya took a scroll out from his pocket opening to reveal a bigger scroll, I said you're not going anywhere till I seal that monster back into you and drag your pathetic self back to Konoha, he said louder this time looking Naruto in the eyes. Naruto growled and his eyes turned crimson, he looked at Kiyomi and motioned his head for her to go back to the house. She nodded and ran towards the house to get their supplies and make sure everyone got as far away from the fight and fast. When she started to run Jiraiya started to run after her only to be stopped by Naruto who appeared in front of him and cut him off. I don't know why you're being a complete idiot and protecting her Naruto now move he ordered, but was shocked when he saw Naruto's nails grow longer and sharper, his birthmarks deepened, and a dark red chakra cloak started to form around his body. Jiraiya hopped back a couple of times, shocked beyond belief. If the Kaiubi is out, why can Naruto still draw out its power he thought for a second before smirking if he draws out more than three tails he'll lose himself, then I'll suppress his chakra, and while he's out, I'll tie him up and go grab the Kaiubi, hopefully being outside of Naruto has weakened her. Naruto stopped at three tails for a while and looked at Jiraiya, you ready old man. I hope you have regrets when I kill you because you don't deserve to die peacefully. But then again considering you're going to hell I don't think that will be likely he said in a serious tone with no emotion on his face. That was when three extra tails sprouted from the cloak, making the man's eyes widen in fear, but regained his composure. I know I'm eventually going to die, but it won't be today, and you won't be the one to end, Mijure replied as he clapped his hands together and started to gather nature energy to try to go into sage mode, only to find he couldn't. What the? Why can't I go into sage mode he asked himself, and then heard Naruto chuckle. You know what Jiraiya instead of finishing you off with the power I was given by Kiyomi-chan after I became her maid, I have a better idea. I'll defeat you with the very thing we learned from the toads, but unlike you, I managed to master it. Naruto says as the cloak recedes which returns his features to normal and starts to gather nature energy. Jiraiya had a look of disbelief on his face when he saw Naruto gather nature energy without the assistance of the elder toads. 
A powerful wind blew past them and then it died out. Naruto then looked up at the bewildered old man. He had reddish-orange pigment markings around his eyes and horizontal golden slitted pupils. Impossible. You mastered sage mode Jiraiya asked horrified only for Naruto to smirk and suddenly disappeared from Jiraiya's view. Jiraiya's body hunched back and felt a punch that felt like it had the strength of a bijuu behind it. He looked down and saw Naruto's fist buried in his gut and he coughed up blood. He took a few steps back and held his stomach with both hands while blood dripped from his mouth. He looked up only to see Naruto gone once again and looked around frantically. Said blonde was behind Jiraiya his back turned and gazing at the forest. You're getting slow old man. Naruto stated and out of reflex, Jiraiya delivered a backhanded strike with his elbow, only for it to phase through Naruto, and wondered what happened, only to see Naruto fade away. Like I said Naruto stated as he was now in front of Jiraiya with his fist cocked back. You're getting slow. Dotty then sent his fist towards Jiraiya's face, but he manages to leap away. When his fist makes contact with the ground, an explosion of dust and debris occurs and the ground shakes. Jiraiya manages to land on a tree branch with a still shocked look on his face. I don't believe this. When did he master sage mode? He never showed any signs of completing it during our training in Mount Mayaboku. That simple old man Naruto said which made Jiraiya's eyes widen and he turned his head to see Naruto standing on a tree branch and leaning against the tree with his arms crossed. You were too busy peeking on women, riding your smut and ditching me to know whether or not I completed it, and Fukasaku and Shima-sama said that I was their best student in learning how to use it fully, especially when I didn't need them to assist me to gather nature, energy Dotty said with a smirk on his. They even commented that I was even better than you in learning their lessons. Kind of sad really since you spent nearly half of your life learning from them and still haven't completed it. A scowl formed on Jiraiya's face. Don't get cocky gaki. Well sage mode is powerful that doesn't make you unstoppable. It takes a lot of concentration to keep the technique steady, and if my memory serves me correctly that's something you lack. Dottie taunted while Naruto rolled his eyes. Oh please your little taunts won't work on me, and you know that crater I formed with my fist. That wasn't even a quarter of the power I have at my disposal he said, making the man's eyes widen. If I wanted to I could level this entire forest with a single Rasen shuriken. Now enough talky then stood straight up and cracked his knuckles. Let's see how strong you are without the toads or sage mode making you up. Dottie said with a murderous look in his eyes. Jiraiya cursed and leapt out of the tree performing a series of hand seals. Pain. Kiryu Endon, fire release. Flame dragon missile Dottie unleashed a powerful stream of red hot fire at Naruto who smirks and leapt into the attack, making Jiraiya's eyes widened. Has he lost his mind? Leaping into a powerful fire jutsu like that is suicidal even for before he could finish the sentence, Naruto went through the flames and wasn't singed whatsoever shocking Jiraiya. Before the man could react, Naruto swung his fist at his face, but Jiraiya tilted his head away to avoid the punch. Said blonde smirked which confused Jiraiya until the man felt a force hit him square in the jaw and sent him flying backwards and crashing into the ground. Naruto landed on the ground while Jiraiya got out of the crater with blood dripping down his busted lip. You're probably wondering why you were struck in the jaw even though you avoided the punch. You see Jiraiya the aura of a sage's Sinjutsu chakra can also become an extension of my body, and only those who have trained and mastered Sinjutsu can't see it. So even if my punches and kicks miss you the force behind them can still cause damage, and if any of them were to actually make physical contact with your body, you'd end up being crippled, so facing me in close combat is out of the question. Dotty finished with an evil grin on his face. Don't count me out yet brat Dottie said and performs a snake seal and adds chakra into his hair, making it lengthen and sharpen. Ninpu. Ranjushigami no jutsu, wild lion's main technique. His hair extended and morphed into the mouth of a roaring lion with his maw opened. Naruto scoffs and channels wind chakra into his hands, crossing them together with his index and middle fingers extended. Futen. Daikei's no yeba. Wind release. Great wind blade he instantly swung his arms outwards in a slashing motion. Two powerful blades of wind ascend towards the mauve hair, and when they made contact, the blade shredded the technique apart, surprising Jiraiya since the technique was supposed to be stronger and sharper than steel. He cancelled the attack and slammed his hands into the ground. Doten. Doryuhiki. Earth release. Earth mud wall a large wall of earth rose up from the ground in front of Jiraiya and blocked the wind attack. Naruto took this opportunity to dash towards the earth wall at great speed, with his fist reared back. When he gets close enough, he punches the wall and instantly destroys it. The force of the attack was so great that it sent Jiraiya flying backwards, but he flips backwards and onto his feet, skidding to a halt. He saw Naruto charging right at him leaving a trail of after images. Jiraiya unleashed a Kiryu Endon at Naruto once again, well said blonde's cheeks bulge and fires a powerful stream of water which dissipates the attack and heads towards Jiraiya and hits him full force, sending him crashing through three trees and hitting the ground hard. 
Hiraya coughs up blood and slowly gets up only to see Naruto ascend towards him, with a larger version of the Rasengan in his right hand looming over his head. He was about to jump out of the way, but his feet were sinking into what looked like the Yomi Numa, Swamp of the Underworld. Oh no. He thought in horror and fear as Naruto slammed the Futon. Adama Rasengan, great ball spiraling sphere, into the man's stomach and grinding into his body. Back at the house, Kiyomi and the other women as well as Lee and Shino, got everything packed up and were outside fully dressed. The house suddenly poofed away into a large scroll as Kiyomi instantly sealed it up and placed it onto her back. That was when an explosion of chakra and wind nature chakra swept across the area, and they were forced to cover up their faces to avoid the debris. They looked up once it ended, looks like Naruto-kun is finished dealing with the old man. Kiyomi said as she saw Naruto walk out of the forest, dragging an unconscious, cut up, and bleeding Jiraiya towards them with a calm expression on his face. He stopped for a moment, and his hand was enveloped in demonic chakra Naruto, and then looked up and down Jiraiya's body, until he saw what he thought was a good spot for what he was about to do. He plunged his hand into the wound and pumped his chakra into Jiraiya's body. When he was done he took his hand out and healed Jiraiya, so there was nothing left. They all looked at him and say that he was back to normal well he's never going to be a problem ever again Naruto said summoning a tote, ah Gamakichi nice to see you again. I trust your dad already told you what has happened the toad looked down at Jiraiya glaring at the unconscious man, yay Naruto he told everyone Naruto smiled at this, okay Gamakichi, I need you to do me a favor, take this useless shamed old man back to Konoha, and tell the Hokage what has transpired, and how you and the toads no longer serve Konoha got it. Oh and I believe your dad said something about telling Tsune that the slugs and monkeys would follow, Sukamakichi smiled at this gladly Naruto was all the toad had to say before grabbed Jiraiya and poofed away. When Gamakichi was gone Tamari stepped forward Naruto-kun I was wondering how is Jiraiya not going to be a problem anymore, just because he no longer has the toads. I mean you even went as far as healing him she asked, then thought for a moment, wait what were you doing before you healed him. Naruto smiled at this, I poisoned his body so to speak with my demon chakra, and as we speak it is slowly destroying his chakra network, slowly and painfully killing him, and nobody can do anything to stop it or help him not even their hokage he said as he started to walk away, and was quickly followed by his girls and the two former Konoha ninja. The Omi walked beside Naruto so where to now Naruto she asked curious. He continued walking and replied well the scent I smell is where I had planned on visiting anyways, so as for where we're going dot well we're going to pay the Mizukage a visit. In Konoha, Tsunade was pacing around her office multiple things going through her head. She was thinking about what was the best course of action to take, as things were getting worse in her village, she was thinking about how she could set things right, and what caused it all in the first place. And lastly she was wondering where Jiraiya was as it had been longer than it should have been, if all he was going to do was talk to the toads, and see if they could help him find Naruto. She was taken out of her thoughts when she heard a loud poof, and Gamakichi appeared with Jiraiya, and was shocked when the toad just tossed him onto the floor, Gamakichi what the hell happened to Jiraiya she was surprised when she looked up to meet a pair of angry eyes Gamakichi. The toad never took his eyes off her hokage of the hidden leaf village Dottie snorted, what used to be considered an honorable village by the toads, is now a disgrace. I have been sent here to bring back this dishonored man, and to give a message. The toads no longer serve Konoha and will not be here should you ever require assistance. If you're wondering why you will have to ask the useless Anon lying before you what has transpired when he awakes as I don't wish to be here longer than I need. And also my dad told me to tell you that the slugs, monkeys, and snakes are going to be told what you all did. So you and Asuma better say your goodbyes he then snarls, not that they'll think twice about leaving, once they hear how far this village has fallen, and who knows maybe if they're feeling generous the monkeys will stay with Kanohamaru. We're still not sure what we are going to do about Kakashi's dogs, since they are too attached to him. And guys turtles are no issue since guy hasn't done anything wrong. Goodbye and good riddance with, that said the toad poofed away, and all that was left were two Sanin, one unconscious and the other even more confused than before. Tsunade was currently in the hospital pacing back and forth, trying to figure out what she could do to help her teammate I don't know what Naruto did to Jiraiya, but it's killing him, and if I can't help him, I don't think he will last much longer she thought worried. She was surprised because he had seemed fine when he got back, it even looked like he had been healed despite the gashes over his stomach. She still couldn't forget how scared she had been when he started screaming. It was still on her mind and she still couldn't think of what she could do to help him get better when she found out what exactly Naruto had done to him. Flashback, Tsunade had just gotten over her shock of what Gamakichi had said to her before he left and ran up to check on him. He seemed fine until he suddenly started screaming as if he was in unbearable pain. She did another check on him and still couldn't find anything wrong Shizune. I need a stretcher and a room immediately she screamed out while she was trying everything she knew to try and help ease her teammate's pain. 
She was starting to get tears in her eyes up when she couldn't find anything, and his pain seemed to be getting worse with every passing second. Shizun rushed into Tsunade's office with three other medics they put Jureya on the stretcher, and they all stopped when Jureya suddenly stopped screaming. They all waited in silence to see what would happen next when he slowly came to, he looked around weakly stopping when he saw Tsunade Tsuhaim why you crying. Tsunade looked down and got ready to punch Jureya to the floor but stopped when he started hacking and coughing. She stopped her punch inches away from his face and sized Jureya what happened. Do you remember anything that happened after you went to speak to the toads? Amakichi said that the toads are no longer loyal to Konoha and that the slugs and snakes would hear about what we did, along with every other summon in this village, besides Kakashi's dogs and Guy's turtles. What did you do she asked him concerned and confused. Ureya shot up at this when he recalled what happened to him with the toads and his fight with Naruto, it was Naruto Tsunade, I went to go talk to the toads to see if they would help us find him, but while I was on Gamabunta he was summoned. I sat there confused when I heard Naruto yell out to Gamabunta. I tried talking to him and he became unstable and started yelling at me then when Gamabunta found out about why Naruto left the village and how he grew up Bunta became cold and told me I was no longer allowed to summon the toads. Ureya took a breath and continued, then I was shocked to find out Naruto had released the Kaiubi. I tried to convince him to let me reseal her, but he became enraged and brutally attacked me without mercy he then thought for a second and looked at her, I think she might have started controlling him while he was here in the village, and that's why he left, and it's gotten worse since he released her he told her, but then grabbed a bowel that was next to his bed, and threw up noticing some blood in the bowel he looked over to Tsunade, what's wrong with me Tsunade? I feel like shit and I don't know why, but I think Naruto did something to me. She looked away and thought for a moment, I've been trying to figure that out, since you were brought back Jiraiya. Think hard what's the last thing you remember before passing out he closed his eyes and felt a huge surge of pain in his chakra coils and gasped in pain I, I think he might have poisoned my chakra coils finally spent of the energy he had at the moment, Jureya passed out, little did they know someone had been listening in on their conversation and ran to tell the others what she had heard. Flashback end, everyone who had been denounced by Naruto had been called to Tenten's house, telling them she had to talk to them and all had arrived except Sasuke. Kiba was finally fed up of waiting and got up, are we actually going to do anything, here Hinata grabbed his leg and pulled him down as Tenten walked into the room. She gave Kiba a little glare and took a sigh. Okay guys I already talked to Niji and we have come to a conclusion, but first we want to see if anyone else has two dots she took a quick look at everyone, who else thinks that they know why the village has gone to shit as well as our lives. As she expected Tenten sighed when everyone raised their hands and even saw what looked like tears coming from a few of the girls, but mostly from A.M. and Hinata. How many of you think any of it has to do with our choices and what we did she was a little surprised to see a couple of hands still up. The ones who still had their hands up were Hinata, A.M., Chaoji, Anko, Haruka, and Shikamaru. Tenten was now a little relieved to see not everyone in the group was completely ignorant or heartless. She looked at Kurenai, Asuma, Yamato, Shizun, Ino, Kiba, Hana, and Kakashi. Why do you even think your actions had nothing to do with the way the village is now she asked annoyed. Bakashi was the first to speak even though he was still reading his book, something the group taking responsibility for their actions couldn't believe, especially after Naruto had ripped out the Sharingan that Kakashi had been with for years. And even though he didn't show it Kakashi was still furious at Naruto for what he did and that after Tsunade was not able to give Kakashi a new eye as it never work. Because we have no reason to believe it's our fault, it's obvious how unstable he is after the actions he took against us. And those girls he was with don't seem to be helping him, in fact, they seem to making him worse he replied in a bored tone still reading his book, but was surprised when Niji appeared behind him and grabbed his book, then tossed it to Tenten who started ripping the book to pieces and was enjoying the view of Kakashi crying over his beloved book. After she was done, she took a deep breath as she rubbed her eyes well maybe you'll change your minds once you hear what happened to Jureya everyone tensed up at this and remained silent, Jureya had gone to the toads to talk to them and see if they could help when Gamabunta was summoned while Jureya was on him, they were both surprised to find Naruto in front of them. So Jureya tried talking to him and when he pissed Naruto off he told Gamabunta about his childhood and how he was raised. Gamabunta became very upset with Jureya and said he was no longer allowed to summon the toads and when Jureya still wouldn't leave Naruto alone, he was nearly beaten to death and had his chakra coils poisoned she stopped and let everything sink in. She looked everyone over and was about to continue when Kiba spoke up well what the hell did he do or say to Naruto that got him so pissed off. Tenten remained quiet at this and lied that I don't know Shikamaru looked at Tenten suspiciously, all I know is that at the moment I don't think even Tsunade will be able to heal Jureya. And that's not all the village has lost the toads and Tsunade was told that the slugs and snakes were next and that pretty much every summon in this village would be gone, except guys turtles everyone was shocked at the news and Tenten looks over to see Anko looking worried. 
Tenton then looked at group that believed they had nothing to do with the state of the village, so what do you think now? Still think Naruto's current state has nothing to do with the way he was treated here. Imato spoke up this time I'm not sure about you guys, but I think this proves he has become even more dangerous than he was before he left, and it wouldn't surprise me if the council decides to put a bounty on his head Asuma, Kakashi and Kurenai all nodded their heads in agreement, while Shizun, Ino, Kiba, and Hana looked to be deep in thought. Inada, Am, and Anko looked to be in tears while Laruka and Shikamaru looked ashamed. Chaoji on the other hand became furious at the four adults, stomped over to Yamato and grabbed him by his collar, are you that heartless, or are you completely blind his hand became bigger, and as he was about to launch Yamato out of the building he stopped himself, no dot I'll let you see for yourself how things are only going to get worse. But I hope by the end of it you've seen what you did, and how the village's state is also the result of your actions. As well as all of ours. Chaoji let Yamato go and walked out, Am was right behind him. Then everyone else left some thinking of how they could Naruto to forgive them even a little, some thinking of what they should do, and some thinking what was the point of the meeting anyways. But Naruto's group, Naruto, Lee, and Shino were all sitting it being their turn to watch for enemies, while the girls were getting some rest, so I was wondering what exactly made you two want to leave, Kanoha Naruto asked starting up conversation. The two simple looked at each other, and Shino was the first to speak, we had noticed your change almost immediately after Sakura, and once we saw and found out why you had changed, we were shocked that our friends had stooped so low and completely disregarded your feelings, and had talked to the Hokage shortly after to see about switching teams. Dottie then sighed in annoyance at the memory, but at the beginning she was ignorant and told us we were worrying about nothing, and that you would get over it. We kept trying as things got worse, and once when we both had seen enough we threatened to quit being Shinobi if she didn't let us switch teams. She gave in once she realized we were serious, but when it was all over and done with you had already left, and we became so disgusted with the village we just decided to leave Shino's side and finished. Naruto thought even less of Kanoha or at least it's Hokage now as he heard their story and looked over at where the girls were sleeping. Lee broke the silence this time, so Naruto-san what do you plan on doing now Naruto looked at the two guys and gave them a real foxy grin, well first I have to search for the rest of my mates, and then if things go as planned, I'll have my own village Lee, and Shino looked at each other, well how many are left Naruto reached into his pocket to check the rings, when he realized something and face palmed himself, I'm such an idiot, Lee and Shino were confused, what? What's wrong? Naruto sighed and looked at the rings in his hand, I've been forgetting to give my girls their rings he quietly walked over to the sleeping girls and slipped a ring onto each of the girls who hadn't yet received one. Pink for Tsunami, yellow for Tamari, brown for Yujido, and green for Fu. He gave each of them a kiss on their cheek and walked back over to the guys, well it looks like I'm halfway done, and if I'm correct we're not very far from the next, Two Dotty said smiling. Most of Naruto's girls were relaxing, while Lee and Shino went to get food, and Naruto and Kiyomi were slowly training Tsunami to gather her newfound chakra that she had received after being with Naruto. Can you feel anything Tsunami-chan he asked her while she was sitting down concentrating. He watched her as he suddenly felt a small but noticeable pulse from her as she jumped surprised at the new feeling. Was that chakra that I just felt Naruto-kun she asked jumping up and smiling and then hugging him when he nodded happily for her. Kiyomi smirked, deciding to mess with her, I wouldn't be celebrating just yet Tsunami-chan you still need to harness it and learn to use it for battle Tsunami looked over and smiled playfully before looking over to Naruto. Yes I know, but I'm sure with such a smart and talented teacher, I'll get it down in no time she replied, not letting Kiyomi ruin her good mood. She then looked at Naruto and whispered in his ear sensually, right na dot ru dot to dot ku and she finished smirking at him. In Kanoha, Okage's office, the village was no longer in a state of panic, as Tsunade had finally gotten the civilians to calm down. Unknown to most of them though was that the village was just barely getting by. On another note every time one of the nurses asked about Jureya and what they should do, she told them to just make sure he was comfortable, and if anything happened to call her. Looking out her window at the village she sighs, is it our fault that the village has fallen so far she turns back to her desk and thought if grandfather or sensei saw us now what would they say? Would they be mad at us and the villager Naruto for his actions? She looked down and smiled weakly, I know what the village did to Naruto growing up wasn't okay, but that doesn't excuse his actions and him deserting the leaf. And I don't know why the toads and slugs got so mad after being told everything, especially how me and Jiraiya weren't there for Naruto growing up. Jiraiya was too busy with his spy network for Naruto, and as for me dot dot she faltered for a second trying to think of a good reason. I was still getting over all my sorrows and helping Shizun with her medical training she told herself nodding, but whether she wanted to admit or not, even she knew that was not a good reason, but a very good excuse. She looked up and called Anbu recognizing Yamato. She spoke quickly Yamato, I need you to get me Asuma, Kakashi, Kurenai, Anko, Hana, and Aruka. 
And when you do I would like you to come back as well as this meeting will require your presence, as well when she finished, Yamato merely nodded before leaving to do the task given to him. Tsunade looked up again Shizun get in here. But Ino and Shikamaru. Ino and Shikamaru were walking through the village trying to clear their heads and go over all that has happened lately and try to come to terms with everything. Well they would but Shikamaru was currently in deep thought not even noticing Ino trying to get his attention until. Pay attention to me when I'm talking to you Shikamaru. Heard snapping out of his thoughts just in time for Ino to hit him over the head. He looked up at her, annoyed, what was that for you troublesome woman? Ino looked ready to hit him again before taking a deep breath well at least now I have his attention she thought to herself, I was trying to ask you a question, but you were so deep in your own thoughts you weren't paying attention, again she said annoyedly, only to look at him calmly, what were you thinking about anyways she asked curious, Chikamaru only sighed and rubbed the now sore spot on his head, I was thinking about the meeting Tenton called everyone too. I have the feeling she was leaving some details out, more specifically the fight with Yureya and Naruto he replied looking up at the clouds. Ino looked at him puzzled with this, but why would she do that? I mean anything that has to do with Naruto would be good information for all of us to know right she is convinced of her own motives for the blonde rogue. Shikamaru sighed, that's what I was thinking about when you decided to hit me, Ino he said looking at her deadpan, only to see her roll her eyes at him. Well then you should have told me that instead of outright ignoring me, Bakashi yelled at him again hitting him, but not nearly as hard this time. She thinks for a moment, but if she is hiding something what exactly do you think it was she hit Shikamaru? Said boy only looked at her finally seriously. I can think of a few theories Eno, but I'm not positive about any of them. Dottie told her seriously and looked over to see her, surprised to see him thinking this hard about anything. She thought for a moment to herself, maybe we could just go and ask Tenton herself she said, as if it was the simplest thing in the world looking over waiting for his reply. The only nod at keeping his thoughts to himself sure, since I can't seem to think of anything myself Eno I guess if we're lucky once she sees that we're onto her, she'll just admit what she was hiding he said getting up and heading to Tenton and Niji's place Eno right next to him. Three minutes earlier with Tenton and Niji. Tenton was training hard with her life partner, but was slowly starting to get annoyed, as she noticed his mind seemed to be elsewhere, most of the time with him standing still for a minute or two while thinking. Finally giving up and growling annoyed she spoke up ok Niji, since you're obviously too preoccupied to take training seriously right now why don't you tell me what is on your mind. Niji sighs and looks over to his partner Tenton, why did I get the feeling you were withholding information from the rest of us at the meeting he asks her to get straight to the point. Tenton mentally slaps herself forgetting that it is very hard to hide things from the Hayuga. And if he caught on to me then Shikamaru probably did too. Meaning I can be expecting a visit from him, and Ino Sunch walks over to him and motions for him to sit down next to her. Waiting till he does so she whispers into his ear, before I tell you can you use your Byakugan and make sure no one else is around. I don't think this information was supposed to be known by anyone besides Lady Tsunade and Jiraiya. Niji merely nods and checks the area quickly before looking back to Tenten and nodding once more, letting her know the coast was clear. Tenten looks over to him and speaks quietly and seriously, well you know how we were told that Naruto released the Kaiubi, and that she was one of the women with Naruto who helped fight the group sent after Naruto Niji. Nods at this, letting Tenten continue well I guess that after Gamma Bunta left Ureya was so pissed off that he was still underestimating Naruto, and even threatening to seal Kaiubi back into him, after he knocked Naruto out, and that then he would drag him back to Konoha, even without the Toad's approval. Niji's eyes grew wide at this before he scoffed, has he really become that senile that after seeing what Naruto and his group did to the others, he thought he could still treat Naruto like a child and not expect retaliation. Fenton nodded slowly, and that's not even the worst part. According to Jiraiya, it wasn't even close to being a close fight. I don't think he even scratched Naruto. From what I heard Naruto was merely playing with Jiraiya before he finally knocked him out. After that was when Naruto poisoned his chakra coils and healed Jiraiya, before sending his body back to Konoha with the toad's message. But Tenten finished Niji just sat there for a moment letting it all sink in before speaking, I can't believe Naruto was hiding all this power from us. I knew he was strong, that much was obvious after he defeated the Akatsuki, but this. This is something entirely different. Tenten only nodded in agreement before she saw Niji looking past her. She turned around to see Shikamaru and Ino walking towards them and sighed knowing what they wanted. I should have just waited till they got here. Then I wouldn't have needed to tell the story twice she thought mentally before turning to talk to them staring warily at Ino, hoping that after Tenten was done, Ino could be part of the group who now saw everything was because of them. But Hinata and Kiba. Kiba sighed annoyed as he was still trying to get Hinata to cheer up. She was really depressed after coming back from the failed mission of trying to get Naruto to return to Konoha, and after the meeting they all had with Tenten she was considerably worse. He walked over to where she was sitting in their room and sat beside her Hinata, how long are you going to be like this? 
I mean I know it sucks that Naruto is being such a prick and how he deserted us, but crying like this isn't going to make things better. He said, hoping to get a response. And he did, but not the one he was expecting. Dibba suddenly felt his cheek sting followed by having the wind knocked out of him, and looked up as he was on his knees trying to get his breath back, what the hell Hinata however he quickly relaxed, after seeing the look of rage in her eyes. She stood up and looked down at the man no boy that she was stuck with what's wrong with me what's wrong is that I still can't believe how you and the others continue to blame Naruto when you are the ones being selfish she screamed in the loudest tone she has ever used in her life. Slowly getting back on his feet Kiba looked at Hinata with a mixture of anger and confusion, and spoke at her without yelling, but still showing his anger, you're still defending him, he was the one who betrayed the village. He was the one who allowed those bitches of his to brutally attack you and the others. He turned his back on us, the village and you. So why do you still continue to defend him Kiba finished yelling at the end before he looked down, as his anger dissipated to see her looking down with what appeared to be tears running down her cheeks. She slowly looked up anger and pain in her eyes, while the tears continued to flow because. He. Deserves. It. The only reason he betrayed us is because we all betrayed his trust first. We all knew what his childhood was like and how much he wanted to be loved and cared about. He thought that we all cared for him and gave us his heart, hoping we would do the same. And how do we repay him? By breaking his heart into pieces one by one until there was nothing. She fell to the ground as she sat with her knees and continued to cry, and because it's the least I can do for him. I loved him my whole childhood and because I was always too shy to tell him how I felt he dated Sakura. But as selfish as it sounds I was actually happy when Sakura dumped him for Sasuke. I even went as far as to finally confess my love to him, hoping that he would accept me. And he did she laughs disgusted with the memory, but not for what Kiba thought she did. She looks down angrily at herself, I was so happy Kiba. But when he had to go on that mission, I started having thoughts like, what if he finds someone else while he's gone? Or what if he actually didn't want to be with me, but couldn't turn me down because he didn't want to hurt my feelings she scoffs at herself, all of which I know now and should have known back then are things Naruto would never do. She then looks up at Kiba, and then you Kiba instead of reassuring me of the same, you saw Naruto being gone as they go ahead to start flirting with me again. Combined with all the negative thoughts I was having before along with your continuous flirting dot I finally gave in she said looking down as Kiba smiled at the memory of that night, they had their first time when a thought hit him. Yeah I remember that night Hinata. I thought it was so nice finally getting to be with you. I loved hearing you moan and yell my name as we took it slow like you wanted. Right before we took that final step. I still can't believe that you didn't even give Naruto your purity, and that I was the one to receive it instead. I thought that was so nice he replies, sighing happily at the memory not even realizing what he said before it was too late. This time Kiba didn't even get to scream as his groin was struck, and he fell to the floor looking up with tears in his eyes, as he tried to hide the pain he was in. He looked up to notice Hinata wasn't there and was now at the door not even looking at him, don't remind me she, then turned around to look at him, you really don't care about the pain I'm in do you she, turned back around looking out the door and before leaving spoke again, I'm going for a walk. Hopefully by the time I get back you will have grown up even just a little. And don't worry there isn't going to be any permanent damage to your little friend Kiba. I'll be back in a couple hours. She finished before slamming the door leaving Kiba on the floor in pain. And after all this Kiba had only one thought on his mind man, she is scary when she gets pissed. I'll have to remember not to get on her bad side anymore. Back in the Hokage's office, Tsunade was currently looking over all the people she had called, so I'm sure you're all wondering why I called you to my office with, that said Tsunade didn't even notice some of the shinobi roll their eyes, I wanted to call you all here, so we can all brainstorm on how to get Naruto back to the village, and after seeing how strong he's gotten, I can't rely on the younger ones anymore she finished, waiting to see if any of them had any ideas. Hiroka, Anko, and Shizu merely looked down, not saying a word, while Hana was discreetly trying to hide her emotions. The first person to step forward was unsurprisingly Kakashi, who cleared his throat before speaking personally Lady Tsunade, I think we should go ahead and put Naruto in the bingo book. It's much too obvious now that if we just let him be he will become a huge problem. While our former allies would like to go ahead and just place the blame on us, once they see just how much Naruto has changed, I'm sure they will help us subdue him Kakashi finished bowing his head and then sat back down. Tsunade put her hands onto her desk thinking over what Kakashi said, I will admit that is a possibility Kakashi, and I'm assuming Naruto would be given an S rank. The only question I have now is do we put him down as a capture or kill on side Aruka, Anko, and Shizun looked up with their eyes widening at this. Hana however looked up angry and spoke her opinion, what why would you even consider marking him as a kill on sight? If you were going to go and do that, what was the point of even sending Kakashi and the others to go and try to bring him back she yelled with a ferocity in her voice, making even Kakashi surprised. Once he thought about what she said though, he smiled, all were you that worried about me when I had to leave Hana. 
I'll admit Naruto did a number on us, but you know I wouldn't just leave you alone like that right? Hana promptly walked over to her life partner and bonked him on the head, it's not like that you baka she huffed, and once she was calm turned back to the hokage. What I meant is, why even try to retrieve him if you're just going to go around and put him in the bingo book? And furthermore why even bother with that when I highly doubt anyone else in the elemental countries could stand up to him. Especially with the women he has at his side now. Why don't we just leave him alone and see what happens she said looking around to see everyone but Aruka, Anko, and Shizun looking at her like she was crazy. Tsunade cleared her throat getting everyone's attention, that is completely out of the question. If we leave him there's no telling how much damage he will cause, and if there's even a small chance that he will go to a new village or even turn the other villages against us more we can't risk it. Shizun got up at this and walked over to her mentor, actually Lady Tsunade, I think what Hana said is a good idea. Why don't we just leave him alone? Even for a little while Tsunade looked at Shizun confused as did Yamato. Yamato spoke up before Tsunade had a chance Shizun, how can you even agree with Hana after seeing what Naruto was capable of, and how he treated us as soon as Shizun turned around and glared at him. She walked over to him and looked him in the eye, because unlike you and the others, I'm not afraid to admit that we screwed up, and it's our fault that Naruto left everyone went silent at this, right up until it registered what she said when all hell broke loose. Meanwhile, Sasuke Chiha was walking in the Anbu prison following a guard to a cell. When they finally arrived the guard let him in before leaving him with a warning before closing the door, don't try anything, stupid Sasuke merely scoffed at the remark before he turned around and saw who he was looking for. Hello, Sakura. Back in the Hokage's office, the group of shinobi was still in Tsunade's office, arguing over what they should do with Hana, Anko, Haruka, and Shizun, voicing the idea of leaving Naruto alone when someone burst into her office, Lady Tsunade we have a problem. The arguing stopped as Tsunade sighed, what is it now the Anbu guard flinched for a second before continuing in a calm tone. I'm sorry to interrupt your meeting Hokage-sama, but Sasuke Chiha has just been found dead. The room was deathly quiet at this before Tsunade snapped, what when and how did this happen? The Anbu guard looked nervous. We don't know how he was killed yet Hokage-sama, only that he was found dead in the Anbu prison, and that's not the worst of it. Tsunade sighed at this and felt an even bigger headache coming, what could possibly be worse? The guard stood his ground, it's Akura Haruno Hokage-sama. She's gone. Tsunade and everyone currently standing in her office stared at the Anbu guard silently, until Tsunade herself finally broke the silence, you want to run that by me again. I don't think I heard you correctly. Tsunade finished with a level glare. Anbu felt very nervous under the woman's glare, but cleared his throat before he spoke again, Sasuke Chiha had gone to visit Sakura in her cell. We left them alone as he asked because we were outside the door, and she still had her chakra sealed. He stopped for a moment to catch his breath. We were waiting outside the door when we heard a cry of outrage that sounded like Sakura, but knowing of her anger issues left them alone. It wasn't until we heard Sasuke scream out that we ran in there, but by the time we got the door open the Ichiha was dead on the floor, and the wall of her cell looked as if someone had either blown a hole or smashed their way out, and she was gone. He finally finished and waited to see what she wanted. Tsunade was going through the story in her head to decide her next action before speaking up, as the Ichiha's head still intact she asked everyone's confusion. Anbu was confused yes it is Hokage-sama, but why? Tsunade got up and started walking to the door Shizun. Get me Anoichi and tell him to get to the cell that used to hold Haruno Sakura now. We only have an hour at most before Sasuke's brain stops functioning. If we hurry we can check his memories to see what exactly happened. Shizun jumped surprised at her tone, but quickly recovered yes Tsunade Sama. Anbu prison cell. Tsunade was already looking over Sasuke's body when Anoichi finally arrived, you called for me Tsunade Sama he asked momentarily, stopping at the side of the dead Ichiha. Tsunade looked over her shoulder, yes Anoichi. As you can see Sasuke has been killed and I would like you to go into his mind before it stops functioning, so we can see what exactly happened and where Sakura is. The Yamanaka clan head simply nodded in understanding and moved over to the Ichiha's body before doing his clan's dot. Sasuke's last memory, Sasuke Ichiha was walking in the Anbu prison following a guard to the cell holding Sakura. When they finally arrived the guard let him in before leaving him with a warning before closing the door, don't try anything, stupid Sasuke merely scoffed at the remark before he turned around and saw who he was looking for. Hello Sakura Dottie smiled, never thinking that she of all people, would have fallen so far. Sakura instantly looked up at hearing Sasuke's voice and cried tears of joy seeing her life partner. Sasuke. You're here. Oh Sasuke, you won't believe what Tsune did. Just because my parents had told us how Naruto was actually the Kaiubi she killed them she cried out in outrage. She had a furious look on her face and continued, after that meeting we all had in her office, and she told the rest of you to leave she asked me why I had called him a demon, and when I told her she sent an Anbu to get my parents, and when they finally got there and admitted to it, she sent a kunai through each of their skulls she started getting tears in her eyes as she recalled the memory. 
She looked up at him again, but with a glare this time she killed my parents. I was so angry that I wanted to kill her as well. I still do. She said with a dark look on her face that unnerved even Sasuke for a moment. She looked up at him and finished, so you came here to get me out of here, right? You're a clan head. I'm sure you convinced the council to let me out, right? She asked, smiling with hope and love in her voice. Only for her smile to drop when she saw him smiling and chuckling. Sasuke shook his head and said quietly to himself. Smartest girl of our class and was an apprentice of Asanin, but still so naive. It was loud enough for her to hear what he said. He looked her in the eyes and saw her look of confusion. You are a prime example of why ignorant civilians should not be allowed to be Shinobi Sakura. If you actually believed what your parents said about Naruto, then you are even stupider than I thought. He pulled a scroll out of his pocket and showed it to Sakura, what is this Sakura? She looked at him confused. It's a ceiling scroll Sasuke-kun. I know that so why are you asking? Sasuke held his hand up. He then unsealed the scroll and grabbed a kunai. What is this Sakura? Growing tired of pointless questions Sakura growled out, it's a kunai Sasuke-kun. Why are you asking me all these stupid questions she asked, losing her patience. Sasuke smiled, but the kunai came out of the scroll Sakura, so according to your parents' logic this isn't a kunai, it's a scroll. He said seeing her realize what he was trying to say. That's different from Sasuke. That is an inanimate object. We're talking about a demon here. She said holding back her anger as she started to hear what sounded like a whisper in the back of her head. Sasuke shook his head looking down on her. No Sakura, it's the same thing. Sakura finally had enough okay Sasuke I get it whatever. Now when am I getting out of here she asked only to grow angry as Sasuke started laughing again. What are you laughing about now she asked having enough. Sasuke looked at her with pity, I didn't come to get you out Sakura, to be honest I could care less. You can rot in here for the rest of your life, bullied by a cellmate, or even executed, I really don't care. Sakura looked horrified at what she heard, you can't be serious Sasuke Kundachi she said, getting tears, I thought you loved me. Sasuke laughed once more, I never loved you Sakura. The only reason I even bothered screwing you was to hurt the dope. And once he left, you not only served your purpose, but I also grew bored of you. Sakura's pov. Sakura looked down taking in everything he had said when she felt power going through her body like she had never felt before how is this even possible? My chakra is sealed off. She thought to herself when she heard a voice. You like this power? Dot I can give you more dot a voice came in her mind. Who is that? Where are you? She said looking around confusing Sasuke. I am with you dot I can help you. Give you the power to get revenge on the Hokage and kill this dot boy for betraying you. Make an example of him. All you have to do is let go and relax. The voice said in her mind. Sakura thought over what the voice was saying before replying why should I trust you when I don't even know who you are. The voice chuckled darkly before replying you do know me. You just never needed me till now. Look to your right. Sakura quickly did as she was told only to see a mirror but it's just me. Wait. She looked closer, only to see it wasn't her. It looked like her, but her clothes were a darker shade, and her eyes were black, except for where her pupils should have been. Instead they were a dark red. And the reflection suddenly smiled darkly at her before replying I am dot you. Sakura gasped before she felt a tug on her mind, and when she finally opened her eyes again, she cried out at the sight that she was now looking at her body, instead of looking at the reflection. The darker version of her smiled so dot do we have a deal. Sakura looked over to Sasuke and thought about everything that had happened and weighed her choices before mirroring the other Sakura's smile. Yes. I agree. The dark Sakura smiled using Sakura's body before she took advantage of the Ichiha's lowered guard and grabbed the kunai he had been holding before advancing on Sasuke as the memory started fading. And memory, Anoichi got up quickly before Sasuke's mind had shut down, effectively trapping him in there. He got up with a forlorn look on his face and looked over to Tsunade. Tsunade saw Mada.we have a problem. Back to Naruto's group, Naruto and his group were currently walking towards their next destination which was Kurigakur. Yomi looked over to Naruto smiling. So Naruto-kun, do you have any idea on who we are going to be looking for this time she asked, even if he didn't know she did. Naruto looked over at her and tried to play it cool, I have a few ideas yay. Yomi smiled at his reply while the others watched in amusement. Oh really Naruto-kun? Would you mind sharing with the rest of us then she smiled trying to call his bluff. Naruto smiled and looked back to the others, why ruin the surprise? Yomi smiled, right. Tsunami walked over to Naruto and grabbed one of his arms stopping him. Naruto-kun do you think we could stop and rest for a moment before we get to Kurigakur? I would like to try and relax a little before we get there, and if possible go over my techniques, again Dachi finished with a warm smile. Naruto looked around to see the others staring at him, and looked back over to Tsunami before smiling, sure Tsunami-chan, we'll go ahead and rest for a bit. I'll get some food heated up for everyone to get re-energized. He quickly pulled out a ceiling scroll before unsealing some fruit and small bars for everyone. 
Tsunami smiled and grabbed some fruit and started eating as did everyone else, so they would not have to worry about eating again till they got to the next village. As everyone sat and ate slowly to relax, Tsunami finished her food before walking over to Naruto and hugging him whispering sensually into his ear, I'm ready for my training. Naruto sensei. Naruto smiled playfully, putting Tsunami onto his shoulders before leaping to the nearest clearing and setting her down. Okay Tsunami-chan. Since we are so close to the village I'm going to go ahead and let you try the three basic techniques again, and each of them only once. I want to see how far you have come. He finished smiling. Tsunami smiled and nodded happily before closing her eyes to concentrate on her chakra. She started to feel something coming, and when it felt bigger she smiled and looked over to Naruto and nodded. He nodded back and smiled okay Tsunami-chan, the first thing I want to see you do is the transformation technique, okay he asked, getting a nod in response. Now I don't care who you change into, but remember that it should be someone you can remember every little detail about. Tsunami nodded as she already had a person in mind, and in a puff of smoke, Naruto was happy to see a perfect copy of Tazuna standing in front of him. Naruto smiled and clapped, very good Tsunami Chan. He walked all around her to make sure there weren't any mistakes. And when he couldn't find any, he walked back in front of her and waited for her to return to normal before speaking up again. Okay, Tsunami Chan, the next thing I want you to do is the body replacement technique, but just to make it a bit harder. Naruto walked over and grabbed a decent sized tree branch and showed it to her. I want you to concentrate on this rock, and when I throw it, I want you to keep an eye on it, and as soon as you see it land, switch, okay? Tsunami looked really nervous with this task as up till now she had only switched with objects that were stationary. She looked up to see Naruto smiling at her. Don't worry about Tsunami-chan. I believe you can do it. Seeing how much confidence he had in her abilities made her resolve stronger as she nodded and concentrated on the branch in his hands. She watched as he threw it through the air holding back so she could keep up with it, and as soon as she saw it land she concentrated, closed her eyes, took a deep breath, and immediately felt a pull. She slowly opened her eyes to see she had been successful, and became overjoyed as she ran over to Naruto and hugged him, I did it she yelled out feeling proud of herself. Naruto smiled and hugged her back, see? I knew you could do Tsunami-chan. He was proud of her and happy that she was so relieved. Now then Tsunami-chan I want you to try and do the shadow clone technique this time. But unlike the past couple of times I really want you to concentrate and make no more than 10 clones, okay he asked, seeing her nod. Everyone watching knew that like Naruto when he was younger was still having some trouble with chakra control. It was the main reason for Naruto to teach her the shadow clone technique instead of the regular one. She nodded and once again concentrated and as she did she had slowly started the hand signs needed for the technique. Everyone watched in silence as she went through the signs until the silence was broken when she finished and yelled out shadow clone technique. And Kurigakur, two redheads were sitting and talking in an office after they had heard that the person they were dying to see would arrive in a little over an hour. The Mizukijime Terum Plus sat in her chair sitting across from someone who had been in her village for a while now as they waited for a certain blonde shinobi. She looked up to see the young girl deep in thought with a blush on her face, and smiled now, why is your face almost as red as your hair Amaru? Are you having dirty thoughts about our favorite blonde she asked playfully, smiling at the young girl's reaction. Amaru jumped at hearing the Mizukage's voice and started sputtering trying to recover herself, what of course I'm not. I was just dot feeling a little warm dot she finished trying to hide her face. The Mizukage smiled and walked over and sat next to the young girl, I know exactly how you feel Amaru. Just thinking about Naruto-kun gets me all warm and fuzzy as well. She said winking at her. Amaru blushed again, that's not what I meant. Mei simply laughed playfully at her and patted her on the shoulder. I know Amaru. You don't have to wait much longer now though. He's almost here. And from what I hear he's no longer the innocent boy we knew years ago. In fact I bet he'll know just what to do to rock your world. She finished whispering the last part into Amaru's ear, causing her to faint. Mei simply smiled before laying her down in a comfortable way on her couch, before looking out towards her village's entrance. There. Now if I'm lucky she will be out long enough for me to get a taste first. Poor girl is so innocent it would probably take her hours to get courage to do anything with Naruto. Mei thought to herself, smiling. Back to Naruto's group, everyone had been surprised to see that the clearing was suddenly filled with at least 50 tsunamis. Naruto smiled and walked over to the original as the clones started dispelling in groups. When he finally got to the tsunami he saw that she looked sad that she couldn't do what was set for her, until Naruto lifted her head up and looked her in the eyes. Now, now, Tsunami-chan. No need to look upset. Well you may not have been able to do what I asked, this was still a lot better than your last tries. He finished smiling at her. Tsunami looked happy and smiled. Thank you Naruto-kun. Naruto smiled and picked her up before the chakra user would hit her and carried her to the others. Well is everyone ready at all their nods he smiled. Good, because we aren't making any more stops. Kurigakur, here we come. 